This is George Shears, and it is the morning of January 9th, 2024, and um, I am located at my retirement paradise on Pioneer Lake, about 10 miles southeast of Cotton, Minnesota, where we retired in 1999. And um, I was greatly saddened to learn just three days ago that my dear, long childhood friend Lois uh, passed from this earthly realm on New Year's Day. And um, I am very grateful that her daughter Nita picked up a text message that I had sent to her phone and um, informed me of her passing. And then uh, yesterday afternoon, I had the great pleasure of, of meeting her youngest son, John, on the phone and um, had a, a very um, interesting and pleasing conversation with him. And uh, Nita had told me that there was going to be a celebration of life for her mom this coming Saturday in Big Falls. And um, knowing that uh, the vagaries of the winter weather and my challenges in winter driving at age 88, I knew immediately it probably wouldn't be wise for me to try to attend that memorial as much as I would love to do so. Uh, however, this morning, early, about four o'clock in the morning, I awakened with the sudden inspiration that, wow, I can be present at this memorial, not in bodily form, but uh, in the form of this uh, audio message that I'm now getting ready to record. I was, uh, I suspect that Lois from the other side had something to do perhaps with tapping my internal guide, as I call it, on the shoulder, to tap me on the shoulder, <laughs> to, uh, to inform me that, hey, you could, you could be there. And uh, so anyway, that's what I am uh, intending to do here. And I hope I don't go on too long because I have so many rich memories of, of uh, Lois going back to my earliest memories. Uh, first of all, I think it's probably important for me to lay out some Spring Lake geography here to uh, help people to get a picture, any listeners to this, to get a picture of um, how I was related uh, in relationship with uh, not only Lois, but her, her parents and her younger sisters, Alice and Darlene, from, um, I, I'm guessing at least it began around the age of four or five. Now, Spring Lake is this widening in the road, 27 miles north of Deer River, Minnesota where Lois and Alice and Darlene and I all went to high school. And uh, the, the center part of Spring Lake has always been the Spring Lake store and used to be the Spring Lake store and tavern. Now it's the Spring Lake store and post office. And um, for the first six plus years of my life, I lived about five miles west of Spring Lake on Cedar Lake. And um, we were truly out in the boonies. My parents had leased some, a log cabin, log house, four rooms uh, on Indian land. And um, that's where I my parents and my older two brothers, Harry and Vern, and my older sister, Dorothy, were living when I was born. And I was born um, 
at a um, the Nord Norman uh, residence, Maud and Charlie Norman, and they were about uh, five miles further uh, north w northwest of uh, where we lived on Cedar Lake, and Maud was my mother's midwife, and. Uh, so I was delivered early in the morning of May 29, 1935, and always told they found me in a birch tree there on the property. Now, uh, the Peters originally, uh, to the best of my knowledge, lived uh, just south of the Spring Lake store on a road that went uh, back into the the boonies for, oh, I would say the better part of a mile, where an, an old bachelor, Lawrence Laskovich, lived. And uh, the Peters farm was just about, uh, oh, maybe an eighth of a mile on that road, on the west side of the road, directly across from the uh, post office that was operated in by Mrs. Josephine Klett. And uh, Mrs. Klett had a, an extensive posture, pasture um, that was on the, um, the east side of that road running to Lawrence Laskovich's. And then um, just a little bit beyond where the Peters farm was, at the top of the first hill, there was an old bachelor, I don't know how old he was, but he was a bachelor, Clyde Clearwater. And um, I recall that uh, he was um, kind of a benefactor of the, of the Peters girls. He purchased savings bonds for each of them. And um, so anyway, that, that's kind of the general layout of the, of the land there. Now, the Spring Lake School was uh, just to the north of the Spring Lake store. And that is where Lois and her two younger siblings, I'm pretty sure that's where they, they started grade school. And they attended the, um, it was a, actually a two-room country school uh, there for um, all of their grade school years. Now, subsequently, and I'm not exactly sure when this happened, but they, um, their, Lois's parents purchased um, a uh, piece of land about three miles west of um, Spring Lake on the same road that went to Cedar Lake where I spent my first six years. And um, that's where they lived then for the remainder of their school years and when I knew them. Now, I was indeed very, very isolated as a young child. Most of my friends were chickens and ducks and cows and our horse Fred and, <laughs> and uh, all forms of wildlife, uh, uh, snowshoe hares and uh, and uh, I, uh, at from about age four onward, uh, as long as we lived there, I spent most of my summer hours out fishing on the lake right in front of our house. My mother, bless her heart, was terrified of water, but she trusted me enough to be out there in a boat by myself, enjoying those hours of fishing. It was. My, my memories of, of being there are just nothing but idyllic. They're, they're like a f fairy tale. But uh, I, I don't really know my earliest contact with, the, with Lois and her, her younger sisters, but um, I do know that um, Lois's mom, Helen Peters, was... She was the go-to person in that community. She knew absolutely all there was to know about uh, all manner of things, uh, 
uh, cooking and gardening and uh, she was the only one I think in the community who had the esoteric knowledge of how to to um, clean and uh, and uh, a snapping turtle and it was really quite an art to doing it and my mother learned from um, Helen how to do this and I I recall that while we were still living at Cedar Lake we had snapping turtle more than once it was a great delicacy and I remember it it tasted a whole lot like uh, fried chicken so anyway that's kind of the uh, the overall picture I'm trying to paint here of of uh, how the um, the Spring Lake geography was laid out now in, um, I was born in 1935 in May, and uh, in the late fall of 1940, I suspect probably around the 1st of November, my dad contracted pneumonia. And um, what I remember is he was diagnosed as having double pneumonia. And... Uh, it was one of those rare occasions where anybody in our family needed to be hospitalized, but he was hospitalized at the Grand Rapids um, Hospital. And um, on the um, on November 11th of 1940, Armistice Day, there was this incredible, horrific blizzard, and. Um, my mother and my two brothers and my sister Dorothy had all gone to Grand Rapids. Uh, I'm not sure if that's when my dad was hospitalized there, but they had gone there. And uh, I was left in the custody of the Peters family, where I stayed during that, uh, that incredible blizzard. And... Um, I remember that on um, getting up in the morning and the whole west side of the house had been drifted over with snow. The windows were blocked and it was indeed a, a record uh, blizzard. And my parents and my brother and sis brothers and sister, I'm not sure how long they were stranded in Grand Rapids, but anyway, that's uh, that's where I got to ride out the storm. Now, in the, I, um, as, a, as a very young child, my older brothers, Vern and Harry, took it upon themselves to, to train me <laughs> like, a, like a puppy or a, a pony how to be this smart little somebody that uh, they thought I was. And they diligently taught me to memorize all of the capitals of the then United 48 United States, which I was able to parrot back. You know, sometime between the ages of three and five, I I mastered that uh, parroting process. <laughs> Didn't have the foggiest notion of what a state or a capital was, but anyway, that uh, that was my early training to be. Uh, this smart little somebody, which I then, uh, I lived up to. I started the first grade. I went to the Sand Lake, uh, the what, what it was called, the, the East Sand Lake uh, One Room Country School. That's where I had my first year. Then that school was closed. And um, as a result of my my dad's death on November 29th, 1940. Um, and um, in a couple of years following that, my mother was remarried to Ole Hurd, who lived in a house just, uh, oh, an eighth of a mile west of the Spring Lake store at the top of the Spring Lake Hill with his um, aged father, Jack Hurd. And so in the um, early summer of, it would be 1942, I think, 41, let's see. Anyway, it was after I had graduated from first grade. 
we uh, moved from where we'd been living at uh, Cedar Lake in this four-room log house to Ole's house in Spring Lake. And then starting in the second grade, I attended the Spring Lake Country School along with Lois and her uh, sisters, Alice and Darlene. And at the max, I uh, recall that uh, there are probably no more than 14, 15 kids, perhaps, who attended that school. And so that was where I uh, first really started becoming acquainted with Lois and her younger siblings, although I'm pretty sure, I know for sure, that I had had contact with them prior to that time. And so um, um, I, from um, early age um, in that school, we, we were all mentored by this incredibly wonderful teacher, Renghild Müller, Reggie as her, we called her. And she was just so utterly devoted to doing anything and everything that she could possibly do to, with the very limited resources that she had at hand, to, uh, to teach all of us kids. And uh, uh, some of the things that uh, we did every morning, she had uh, gone to great lengths to, to um, record the lyrics of all the popular songs at the time and had, uh, had uh, cop made copies of them on this, uh, this preliminary form of, uh, of a copy machine, which was, uh, I forget what it was called. But anyway, every morning, the first thing that we all did was uh, to sing songs together, these popular songs together. That was our, our way to starting the day. And we had this uh, this humongous uh, heating stove in the room, and we all had chores to do, and included getting wood in for the stove and coal, digging coal out of the snow banks, and getting water and all that. And uh, and at uh, noon hour each day um, in the winter time, we had hot lunch, which was prepared in this uh, this entry uh, hallway of the school. I forget what the, the what we'd heat these. We'd bring we'd bring a hot lunch in jars and heat it in the hot water on a stove that was out there. So anyway, um, we uh, I had I have and so many charming memories of going of attending that school and recess and all the games we invented and. Uh, it was a wonderful time. Now I continued uh, to be this little bright little professor guy who uh, got straight A's and uh, I kind of had the reputation of being the, the, the bright star <laughs> intellectually in that uh, Wondering country, country School. Now while we, I was still living at Cedar Lake, um, I became acquainted with my, who later became my cousin by marriage, Mike Hurd. He was the oldest child of Pete and Gladys Hurd. Pete was uh, Ole's brother. And uh, Mike, um, at that time, they lived in Wirt. That was north of, of Spring Lake, about 15 miles. And Mike would uh, sometimes come ride with the mailman Stanley Heineck and come and stay with me at Cedar Lake. And uh, Mike was, uh, he was a pretty uh, rascally kid and uh, he, um, I kind of followed his lead and, and uh, we got into uh, a fair amount of trouble together by my doing that. But anyway, uh, after I had moved to uh, to live in, um, in the Herd residence at Spring Lake, um, Mike and his family had moved into a place about uh, oh four miles west of Spring Lake, and uh, but Mike and I continued to be uh, playmates. He was a year older than me, and uh, during uh, the early parts of World War II. 
I recall on one occasion when Mike and I got the bright idea that we would tell the Peters girls that we had been drafted into the army. <laughs> and so uh, one morning we went down and uh, and uh, presented ourselves to them and, and, and convinced them. And as I recall, we convinced them that we had indeed been drafted into the army and so we would be leaving shortly. Uh, it was uh, one of the uh, one of the little pranks that uh, Mike and I played together. Now, Lois, um, one of the most interesting facts about my knowing Lois at those early years is I knew absolutely nothing about the fact that she was born with this congenital constriction of, uh, I guess, her her trachea, uh, esophagus, and she was, uh, for the first seven, I learned this just fairly recently, for the first 17 months of her life, she was in Gillette Hospital in the Twin Cities. Knew nothing about that at all until just fairly recently. And uh, because of that, I suspect that was why she ended up uh, being in the same grade with her younger sister, Alice. And so all three of us were in the same grade as we attended uh, the uh, Spring Lake School. And um, then when we graduated, well, first of all, I should say that for a 15 month period, uh, when I was um, in the middle of the third grade, I think it was, my parents and I moved to the state of Washington where my mother had a lot of relatives and there was a lot of work there in the the, the war industry. And so um, Ole, my stepdad, uh, recognized that it was uh, probably a good idea to move there and make some money. So I attended, um, uh, I was in the fourth and fifth grades there and then we moved back to Spring Lake and I continued. I was spent my last three years of grade school at Spring Lake School. Now, when we all graduated from high, from, from grade school, um, I think that was probably the first year that there was bus service to the Deer River High School. George Lapeer, who was a neighbor who lived um, uh, just a couple of miles uh, uh, southeast of Spring Lake was our bus driver and each morning he uh, would come and pick up the the Peters girls and um, uh, three miles west of Spring Lake and then he'd come and pick me up and we would go to Tal Moon which was seven miles away where we would uh, meet the um, Don Benson bus uh, this was a larger bus that took us the rest of the way to Deer River. And we always hung out in the, the Inkstead uh, country store while we w waited for the Don Benson bus to come. Now, I recall, you know, that on that bus ride, especially from Spring Lake to Talmoon, I would uh, often get engage in my latest uh, harebrained ideas that I would preach to uh, Lois and Alice and Darlene, and they were all my very willing audience. And I was already at that time, I was into all kinds of philosophy. And I remember in particular how I used to regale them as with my, uh, my understanding that when uh, our ancestors lived in caves, they were perfectly happy because they had absolutely no understanding of all these modern conveniences that we had. And uh, so anyway, I, but they were always a, a very rapt audience for me. <laughs> and they, they believed probably most of the stuff that I reeled out to them. Uh, so anyway, I have those warm memories. And Lois, bless her heart, um, I, I was, I would say for the first three years at least of high school, I was mainly playing catch up. I was so socially, you know, out of it that it took me that long to start getting uh, it kind of in the swing of things in high school. And uh, my senior year, finally, I, I, I 
pretty fully blossomed and I just really loved my senior year. And anyway, uh, I, um, in this, our senior prom, I, I had acquired my first girlfriend then, Phyllis Benson, and um, she was my prom date. And I remember that Lois went above and beyond the call of duty for sure. She she went took it upon herself to uh, uh, arrange for me to get a corsage, which of course I knew nothing about. And uh, she made sure that that was available, and uh, so I could uh, pin it on uh, on Phyllis and such like. Anyway, so any I I would say in summary that Lois and Alice and Darlene were very much like sisters to me. And um, I uh, remember um, a lot of delightful times together. And they, uh, all three of them were from an early age. They, they became very actively engaged in the farming operation, uh, you know, harvesting hay and pitching hay and feeding the cows and milking the cows and all of that. But um, I also remember that uh, in Mrs. Klett's pasture, one of the few places that I have ever known uh, where these, um, these um, special berries, wintergreen berries, uh, grew. And I remember us uh, harvesting wintergreen berries a lot in the, in the summertime uh, in the Mrs. Klett's pasture, as well as blueberries and pin cherries and and uh all of that and uh so anyway we and the uh, lois and her siblings were my main playmates um, during those uh, early years now <clears throat> as i recall lois got married to clifford lund right shortly after we graduated from high school in 1949, uh, 1953, we started in 1949, and there were 49 of us who graduated at that time. So Lois got married shortly thereafter. I don't remember the details of that. And then in, the, um, in January of 1954, um, I decided to enlist in the Air Force had my basic training at Lackland Air Force Base, San Antonio, Texas. And then I was transferred to uh, Keesler Air Force Base in Biloxi, Mississippi, where I went to um, tech school to learn to be a radio operator. And very interesting, Lois and her husband Cliff had, um, Clifford had also joined the Air Force. And uh, as I recall, he was on the training teaching staff at the at uh, Keesler and teaching about radar. And uh, they, uh, at that time, had uh, rented a house in Biloxi. And I remember, um, I learned from uh, my conversation with John yesterday that his older brother, Chester Chet, was uh, born in uh, July of 1954. Well, I, I, was, I was really blessed with being able to go to uh, Lois and Cliff's house and have dinner and and such like. And I remember when uh, Chester was born in uh, that year, and I remember he had a uh, some kind of a congenital um, back condition, spinal condition. Can't remember the details of it. But anyway, that's um, I um, that was my next uh, major contact with Lois and Cliff, and. Um, one of the, uh, the really special memories I have is Clifford had a friend who um, had, um, was involved in shrimping, the shrimp boat uh, industry. And uh, each, um, early each um, spring or summer, there was a special event in Biloxi called the Blessing of the Fleet, when all of the shrimp boats would go out and, and uh, form a parade and they come past a, a stand where a priest would uh, bless them with holy water. That was the blessing of the fleet. And I uh, have very vivid memories of that day on uh, that shrimp boat and uh, uh, we caught a, the crew of the ship 
harvested uh, uh, most of a water pail of shrimp, which was prepared in this special Creole uh, uh, spice, uh, boiled in the spices. And anyway, I remember that Cliff and I probably consumed the, the at least two thirds of that pail of shrimp. <clears throat> And uh, that was one special memory there. Well, then I uh, got uh, transferred to uh, Germany, where I spent three years. And immediately upon uh, uh, getting discharged, actually before I was fully discharged, I started at the University of Minnesota. And I spent the next two and a half years getting a bachelor's degree in psychology and then going into graduate school for four years and specializing in clinical psychology. And um, so during that uh, era, I, I don't think I had any contact with Lois. But then in the, um, uh, it probably 1965, I, I recall that she and Clifford had uh, purchased um, a house in South St. Paul. And I remember visiting them there and what a nice house that was. And then... Um, um, I worked at Hastings State Hospital for 11 years. Hastings was uh, south of uh, St. Paul, about um, oh, 15 miles or so. And um, I, I somehow lost contact with Lois and Cliff for a period of time then. And um, But I do remember um, Lois, um, it seems to me that they they may have been having some marital difficulties at that time. And I remember Lois visiting us in uh, uh, my then wife, Anne, and I had moved uh, to a um, place in Friendly Hills in uh, uh, south of St. Paul. And I remember her visiting, and I'm not sure if that was while I was still living there with Anne or it was after I had gotten a divorce and... Uh, remarried my uh, my wife Mildred who has been with me now for almost 55 years and uh, so anyway that was uh, I had some contact I remember then but then um, I, uh, I, I except for our high school reunions that was the only time that I um, remember getting to see Lois and Alice uh, during those intervening years. And um, it was um, only fairly recently that um, I think Lois probably contacted me by phone and she wondered if we were, if there were any plans for another high school reunion. We had had, uh, I believe we'd had our, our, the last high school reunion in, um, 2013 and that would have been our 60th 60th reunion and that was the last one well anyway as a result of that inquiry from Lois we um, we uh, got back in touch and um, especially over the past several months uh, when I discovered that we could communicate through texting she and I had a, um, a very active ongoing texting relationship and uh, I greatly enjoyed that. I felt exceedingly blessed to be able to reminisce with her about all the wonderful things that we remembered from childhood and uh, and um, and then I learned for the first time about her congenital condition of uh, and the painful um, intervention that she had to have to uh, to try again to enlarge her esophagus and uh, and the painful uh, surgeries that she had on her feet, but it was clear to me that she continued to be a go-getter. She's like her mom, you know. Hard work was the 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 be end all and be all of her life, and uh, she was she told me about her gardening and uh, in spite of her extreme arthritis and. Uh, so anyway, uh, I consider those uh, those final months of our relationship to be have been a, a great blessing indeed. And um, I um, the last contact I had with Lois 
was on Christmas Eve day, at which time she told me that she had been busily baking, 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 uh, all kinds of things that they were going to have a special outing at a water park in Thief River Falls. I didn't, she said that she was going to be going there with uh, Chet and uh, I, I, I didn't get the details of this, but I suspect some great grandchildren. I, I don't know who else would be going to a water park. But anyway, that was the last contact I had with her. And since I hadn't heard anything for a couple of weeks, I, I sent a text to uh, uh, re inquire if she was okay and suggested that if, if she wasn't able to respond, maybe somebody else in her family would let me know. Well, Nita, bless her heart, discovered the last text message that I left on her phone and uh, got back to me and, uh, and informed me of, uh, of her mom's passing on New Year's Day. And then I got filled in on the further details of that in my conversation with John yesterday. And so anyway, um, to wrap this up, and I know it's, uh, it's gotten to be long-winded here as I typically tend to get, I should probably um, add on one final thing, that starting in 1973, I began a, um, a um, spiritual odyssey, uh, so to speak, and for the last 50 years, I have engaged in a um, in traveling what I call the road less traveled, and I have immersed myself in all of the great wisdom traditions of the world. And uh, through that process, I have acquired uh, a, um, a pretty clear, at this point, understanding of what life is all about. And um, I should say that uh, what it boils down to, I have a, a firm conviction that what all of us uh, humans are, are, are all one consciousness. And what we, our ultimate identity is nothing other than conscious awareness. And we are all unified in that conscious awareness. And uh, one of the things that uh, I ardently pursued during this long spiritual odyssey is meditation. And um, I um, actually taught a course in mindfulness-based meditation at Abbott Northwestern Hospital for the last five years that I was there. And um, this is so-called mindfulness meditation, which has become truly mainstream in the last uh, couple of decades. Anyway, I, um, I wrote a, a long paper extolling the great virtues of of mindfulness, and uh, I sent a copy of that to uh, to Lois, and um, she told me that she was really um, utilizing what I call deep mindful breathing uh, to deal with her considerable pain. And uh, so, anyway, I um, I hope that uh, that deep mindful breathing, as I call it, it's just natural deep breathing. I hope it served her well in her final days and from what I learned from John yesterday, it sounds to me like she was probably engaging in it in her final hours and moments before she passed on to uh, the um, mind at large, as I like to call it, consciousness at large, universal consciousness, back in the... Uh, the uh, about seven years ago or so, I composed a song, a hymn actually, and I'll end up by singing the chorus of that hymn because it sums up my philosophy, which uh, <laughs> I I continued to uh, impart to, to Lois in her uh, final months, and the chorus of that song goes like this: We're all one. We're all one, just as surely as all sunbeams are the sun. We're all sisters and brothers, and there really are no others. So let's join in love 
and walk each other home. And so, that's how I understand my final months of relating to Lois. We were engaging in this process of walking each other home, and she preceded me, and no doubt I will be joining her one of these fine days. And uh, I, uh, this is my deepest conviction of who and what we are. We are nothing other than universal consciousness, each and all of us. And we are here to love each other and uh, serve each other and do everything we can to uh, bring about heaven on earth with each other. So I hope that uh, these memories have, uh, will serve to, uh, as a tribute to this wonderful person that Lois was and is and uh, that it will be enriching to uh, at least some of the people who perhaps get to hear it. So thanks for listening, and I hope that anybody who uh, is joining in in this memorial will um, always cherish their warm, loving memories of Lois. Bye for now.